Ron Johnson is a pastor, a conservative, a veteran who wants to bring all of those experience to Somerville Town Council, where he wants to serve the constituents of District 1. I speak exclusively, Don, for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Pastor Don Johnson, welcome to the award-winning Quentin's Close-Ups. It's very nice to be with you today. I've been looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Likewise. Obviously, you are a notable pastor, a veteran, a conservative. And now I understand, too, you want to become the next council member for Somerville Town Council to represent the constituents of District 1. You said this, let's restore faith and leadership today. What faith, Pastor Johnson, do you have right now in Somerville leadership today? Well, I don't have a whole lot. Um, you know, some of the actions that they've had recently, uh, like the termination of Rebecca Vance, without giving us in, our, in Somerville a, re a reasonable answer for it. Um, you know, there is some waning faith going on in our in our town over the council and the uh, what they're doing, how they're how how they're addressing roads, traffic issues, the hiring, firing of people. It's just uh, we just need to have a a little. We need to know what our leaders are doing in our town in order to have a little bit more faith in them. I know you don't have much faith in them, and this might be a redundant question, Pastor. But how transparent is the town of Somerville and Somerville Town Council? Well, I guess they go hand in hand. Uh, if they were more transparent, we would probably have a little bit more faith in them, um, as, as well as the rest of the town. When you don't know what your leaders are doing, you do not have, they have a lack of credibility. Why they, you know, let's take Rebecca, for example. Why they would allow her to go up to Myrtle Beach and accept to become the first female presidency of the Town Administrators Association, and in the same time terminate her employment. We need to have a leadership in, in our town council that says, "Why would I let my people go up there and be embarrassed like that?" And and that is one of the things that I'm talking about. You know that that the whole thing could have been avoided. By telling her that it released her from her contract, if nothing else, the day before. And she wouldn't have been embarrassed in front of her entire body of association, as well as the town being embarrassed by allowing her to do it. And I know that Channel 4, ABC News 4, have been trying to get in contact with some of her mayor for a comment about what happened a couple of months ago. Have anybody in some of her heard exactly why she was let go? The only thing that we know is. We can no longer work with her. But this is a person who who's, was heralded as one of the best administrators by the town, including the current administration, the mayor and the council, just a couple of months ago. And now all of a sudden they can't work with her? There, there's something that doesn't sound right about the whole situation. And it doesn't make sense to a lot of people in town are scratching their heads wondering what exactly happened. What do you think ha actually happened? I don't know. I, I'd hate. I don't want to speculate okay, okay. because you know that could take us down the wrong rabbit hole. Um, you know that is something for the town and Rebecca to come out with. But I know that something doesn't. Add, two and two doesn't add up to five, and we we all would love to know why she was let go. Apparently, her peers thought. Her peers in the association thought she was the cream of the crop. Now, we don't know what's going on in Somerville because they won't tell us what's going on. What else do you think the town of Somerville is allegedly hiding from its citizens, the taxpayers? How they come up with the... When they start the building process for development, I would like to know what the reasonable builders agreements are for the builders. Are they, apparently the, the traffic is really bad here. The flooding is really bad in Somerville and we're allowing builders to build without knowing what that reasonable, responsible builder agreement is going to be. What are they going to do to repair the infrastructure in our town 
and us not knowing it, you know, we you know we shouldn't have to go to a special cold meeting out of the blue to find out that this has been approved or that's been approved, uh, as well as the the, UD, the UDO in our town. They are redlining it without replacing things. They've had, like, I believe it's been seven of the last nine or ten council meetings have been special called meetings where they had just redlined the, the uniform development ordinance, restricting builders on what they can do, and they're just tearing it up. Why not re just get rid of the thing? If you're, th if you're just going to go through those motions, just get rid of it. If you don't want it, you shouldn't, and, and don't, don't play bones about it, but you should just get rid of the thing if you don't want it. But if you're going to take something out, put something back in its place, it makes it stronger for the town to be a place where businesses love to do business. Do you believe this particular ordinance is actually driving away business? I think the, the one thing that's driving away business is the, the business licensing or fees themselves. You know, take Berkeley County, uh, the next in area, they don't have any. And that place is booming. Why can't that be the same as Somerville and Dorchester County? And I think that's one of the main causes that's driving bit, uh, stifling business here in Somerville. And I'm going to get back to the business part of this in just a second. But you said this too. I'm running for Somerville Town Council District 1 to serve you, not myself. How are you serving District 1 right now, Pastor, as just a citizen? Well, as a citizen, one of the things that well, let's go back into my what I do for for a living. Um, you know, I sit on the board of Palmetto Pride, uh, the keep keep the state beautiful campaign, the anti litter plan. Um, that alone helps keep places like Somerville attractive through the Dorchester beautification process. Um, you know, through the uh, Berkeley County. Uh, through Charleston County, and we're driving that initiative. If you can keep a town clean, you can attract more businesses. Uh, plus, I also am very heavily involved in the Boy Scouts, uh, in the Coastal Carolina Council, uh, working with our youth uh, as a council chaplain, um, as the as the unit commissioner, as assistant district commissioner, or assistant council commissioner for Sea Scouts, pouring back into the lives of our young people is just is just a couple of ways that I'm feeding back into our district. And you also said this too, I promise once I'm elected November 2nd to never vote to increase my own pay. How many times has this council actually increased pay for town employees? That I don't know. I don't know their pay, the pay scales as far as uh, individual uh, individuals in the town. Um, so I cannot, I can't speak intelligently on that subject i just don't know how often they uh, give pay raises i'm assuming it's on an annual basis um but i don't know should that be the focus versus pay for the town council well i, I think i think it should be um you know t take this covid thing for example they just voted that if you're not vaccinated and you have to quarantine yourself, you don't get paid in the town, a town employees. Um, you know, we should be taking care of our people and we should be encouraging vaccinations. I'm vaccinated. My wife is vaccinated. Um, I get tested regularly at VA. Um, and I encourage everybody to be vaccinated. But it seems like that that is a punishment for our town employees when their pay may not be the highest somewhere in the town, what they're doing, they can probably go into a private sector and make a lot more money. But they work for this town because they love this town. And that's just one way that they're penalizing our, our folks. Um, I, would like, I would like to see that go away. And... But I, I figured it out that basically the pay raise that they gave themselves in council by doubling their salary is the equivalent of a minimum wage job for 40 hours a week for a year or a part-time job. 
Um, there's people out there struggling to pay their bills now on a part-time, on a, on a minimum wage job, trying to support two or three people in their family and walking to work because there's no public transits in town. And they decided to give themselves a pay raise to that level. When this should be a part-time job, we should be doing this because we love our, our town. And I know it's been probably 10, 12 years since they've got a pay raise. But it shouldn't be about a pay raise. If I was on council, I would have voted it. I would have not voted for it. Okay, a couple of things, Pastor. Should, in lieu of vaccinations, should, it, should the town employees just be tested regularly instead of getting vaccinated? I think as an employer, um, and we certainly employ more than 100 people, um, I know the federal guidelines are, are going towards that man, a mandatory vaccination if you have more than 100. So, um, you know, if you've already had COVID, you're, you've got an, a built-in immunity system to it. Now, I'm not a scientist, and, and I can't speak. I can't speak on that. But the, you know, the herd mentality, uh, the herd immunity <laughs> system. Uh, we, we've got the majority. I, I believe I heard we got the majority of our, our workers vaccinated. Okay. Could be wrong, but I think that's the case. Um, if they don't want to get tested. I mean, vaccinated, I think that there should be a, a testing process involved. And if you refuse to get tested, I don't know. Something I have to look into. I know you talked earlier about the lack of public transportation, apparently, in Somerville. How would you push for safety measures with the new and existing regional transportation facilities? For, for as the safety goes? Yes, sir. Well. I think that it, it, it's a win-win for Somerville. I mean, as far as safety goes, right now they're walking down the side of the Highway 78. How much safer can that be? Um, if we had a, uh, a public transit in, in the town here, um, you know, that, of course, would make it exponentially safer for our citizens um, to get back and forth to work. Um, I see people walking up and down the side of the 78, uh, 17A all the time, Dorchester Road. Right. Uh, you know, in this day and age, there's no reason why we can't have a mass transit in Somerville when they have one in Charleston. They have one in North Charleston. But it, seems that they, but it stops right there. The town, the, town of, the town council and the mayor could easily, and I don't know why they haven't done that yet, but they can easily create a transit system in Somerville What exactly would be your comprehensive plan for public transportation? Where exactly would you put it? Well, there's, there's, there's a lot. Um, you, you can have one. There's one on uh, Berlin G. Myers, oh, yes. um, right there by Somerville um, Catholic. Uh, there's a lot there they could put one at. They could put one by the by the public library um, on Trolley Road. They can put one on Bacon's Bridge Road. Um, they can put one on Main Street. Uh, the, 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 the question becomes, can they get access to a right-of-way where they can pull over and pick people up? Mm. Now, one has to logically assume that if we offer mass transit, more people would take it, and there would be less cars on the road. So that may be a double, double-edged sword. I don't know. Um, but I would be willing to, to look at some of the studies on how much traffic it would remove if they are taking mass transit to work back and forth with that re at least some of the traffic. I would like to see a study on that. Okay. What study have you done in District 1 to say, hey, people want public transportation in general? Um, even my opponent w agrees that transportation is needed in district one you know he has said that transportation is needed because his constituents currently are walking everywhere to work uh, district one is the lowest income bracket of the entire town um with brownsville um yes. with, with robin Wynn, yes. uh, even my trailer park of summer village mobile homes um you know we're some of the lowest income brackets 
and I'm I'm in total agreement with him. I just don't know why it hasn't been done yet. And as a disclaimer, I did invite Mr. Aaron on for Quentin's close ups. I sent him an email. He never responded, so I'm hoping to get him on before election day. But I hope he does too. Yes, sir. Absolutely. But let me ask you, uh, and this is a simplistic question, but yeah. where is the money for public transportation in Somerville? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know where it is. Uh, other than building a, some, some infrastructure, some bus stops. Um, but we spent, you know, we, I don't think we have an income problem. I think we have a spending problem. Mm. For example, on Maple Street, we just spent $46,000 paving Maple Street that we're going to tear up in a, in, within a year to the widen the next in Parkway Maple Street extension. That I mean, I could, we could use that $46,000 to pave 500 yards of road from the Nexon Parkway to 78. We can put that into public transportation by building so many shelters and bus stops. Right. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of money, you know, Yes, sidewalks are good, but you can't drive on a sidewalk. Um, and and some like Germantown Road now has a beautiful sidewalk, um, and and that's a dangerous road because there's no medians in there whatsoever. So I'm glad they put one in there, but shouldn't they concentrate first on getting mass transit and making sure our, our roads are safer, and then build sidewalk second just saying and i'm gonna get back to that in just a second as well but uh, how many jobs have been lost in district one over the past year since covid i don't know I, that i i don't have those i don't have that data okay uh, how many businesses have actually closed since covid well i i know that the there there's been several around town that's has closed um I know not not necessarily in my district. There's not a whole lot of businesses in my district to begin with. Uh, but you take um, on Main Street, um, Shoney's is closed down. Um, Ryan's is closed down. Um, the the pizza place is closed down on the corner. Um, various places you go into town, and there are several businesses in in town that's closed down. So I know. I know I can think of probably five or six right off the top of my head that's closed down. And you also said this too. It's time that the mayor and the council start talking about what we can do to provide tax relief for residents of Somerville immediately. What are the household incomes in the town of Somerville? Well, in my district, they're probably $20,000 or less. Um, you know, we have a low, a low income. Um, but I, I think that we can. People can use that their their taxes more in their own pocket, and that would spur the economy and growth. Um, what what I mean by that is is eliminating some of the business taxes. Um, you know, it seems like every time we we vote for a penny tax or any kind of tax in town for a limited time, it never goes away. It's always there, um, and I would like to look on the books and see if if there are taxes that we're paying. We can that has expired. Are we still paying those taxes uh, for for libraries and other types of infrastructure, non essential spending? Is, is what I'm trying to go with. Now, if you were to eliminate those business taxes, how much would that save the town of Somerville? I'm not sure if it would save the town of Somerville anything. What I mean by that is, is the people would have more pockets, more money in their pockets, which in turn, people are going to spend more on the local economy, and it's going to spur growth. Anytime we, we have less taxes and more money, we spend more in the community. And in turn, we, we grow our, our local businesses to the point where we attract more businesses in. And if we don't have like the business license fees, we will attract more, even more low, uh, low income businesses, minority businesses in a town that just can't afford to start up a business. 
how many minority businesses are there in your district? Well, not your district, but in town, in the town of Somerville in generalities. Um, that I don't know. You also I said, that question. oh, no worries. You also said this too. We have, we've had no shortage of time to properly handle the flooding issues in Somerville. It's time for action and it's time for initiative. But what is your five point plan to combat flooding in district one? Well, first of all, I believe that we have to have a comprehensive hiring practice with our leadership in town. That is by far, that is the number one key to tackling any problem that you have. Hiring the right people for the right job. Um, not just the first person that calls up on the phone we hire, or we hire the first person that in, in another department. But we put out a, an, an announcement. We look for candidates. We hire, take multiple candidates. We take the time to interview and get to know them and find the right person for the right job. That's the first key to any problem in town. That's probably our biggest problem. The second is having responsible business plans for developers. Um, what, are, what are they going to pay for out of their pocket? to make the town better for, for infrastructure improvements. Our, the problem that I, one of the problems I see is they're building so much and they're removing so many trees that the natural barriers that handle flooding traditionally aren't there anymore. And they're building up places higher than the town, the, the residents currently around them. And the watershed is just running down into their neighborhoods. Um, I've talked to several people, um, you know, there's a, there's a place on 78, um, that they're putting an apartment complex over there and they built it probably 10 foot up, but, and it was a wetland to begin with. And it was rezoned away from wetlands into an apartment, co uh, a, a res residential, they built it up probably 10 foot right. and now their backyards flood or it was a, with a watershed. Um, a wetlands area to begin with, that's all gone. There is nowhere for the water to go but in their neighborhoods. Um, making sure that the having a comprehensive plan to regularly clean out the ditches and the drainage pipes in town. Um, you know, I know of probably, I know in our district alone, one of the neighborhoods were backed up. It was flooding in the area, and it was just a matter of. Aaron went over there and got the ditch clean. That's that eliminated the flooding in that area. So having, but not only in my district, but having a citywide regular maintenance plan for ditches, I think is crucial to the for the flooding of some of the, these neighborhoods because they're just not well maintained. Would you want the town of Somerville to clean those ditches out maybe twice a year? Well, I think that they should be at least inspected twice a year. And if they need to be cleaned, clean them out. But, you know, not, every, not everyone needs to be cleaned twice a year, but they should have a regular set of eyes on it. And the people, our, our citizens need to know what that plan is from our public works. And speaking of homes, Pastor, let me ask you this. <laughs> this is, might be a, a little loaded one here, but. What's more important for your district right now, building new homes and the commercial space or rehabbing and expanding and better utilizing the existing homes? Building, let me make sure I get this question right. Yes, sir. Building the, new homes and commercial space or rehabbing and expanding and better utilizing the existing homes that are already in place. Well, that's, that's two sides of a coin. Um, you know, I've talked to several residents that because they're in a lower income area, they can't get the financing needed to, to rebuild the homes, to put the, put the needed improvements in, um, in, the, in the homes. You know, Brownsville is a very historic district. Um, you know, Austin High School, uh, it, it's... I wouldn't want to see anything happen to the historical value. You know, downtown his, historical Somerville is great. 
but we have it. We have a treasure in our district, and we shouldn't do anything that jeopardizes those homes and those churches that are in our in my district. Um, we love our homes. We love our district, and it may not be worth the amount that you would pay seven hundred thousand dollars downtown and in, in historical district. But that doesn't mean that they're any less valuable to us. Um, by building new homes and new businesses, that land's got to come from somewhere. And if you do one, if you do the first, you have to eliminate some of the homes in the second. Because there's, there's really not that much room to build in, our, in my district. You know, we're, we're kind of boxed in around the other districts. Right. And if you are for those districts, you're telling them you're not valuing their homes and we're going to take your homes from you so we can build up new homes and businesses. And if you say you want the homes, you're not for growth in the town and you're not for building, building up the town. So it's a, it's a really a no-win situation. You're right. It is a loaded question. And... When you look around, obviously, the town of Somerville, how many new homes are being built right now? Well, they've got se several construction projects going on. There's one out Central Avenue, okay. an apartment complex out in Central, uh, which is going to dump probably another 1,000 cars on the Central Avenue, and they haven't done anything to repair the roads that they've got now. Hmm. I think that before we continue building, you know, put a moratorium on the building and the growth of houses in our town and really look at what we're going to do with the roads because we shouldn't be looking at what is next year or five years. We should be having a comprehensive rolling 25 year plan with our roads in town. You know, we should be looking further down the road than anybody can see. And what do we project the volume to be as far as residents in Somerville? We're, we're like the sixth, seventh largest town in the state. And it's, it's growing. And right now, their only business model is to incorporate unincorporated parts of the county into the town to have growth. But, and, and I see that as... I have no problem with incorporating somebody into town as long as it benefits the town as well. But we can't incorporate and go to tell somebody that they're being incorporated to get better services from our city, uh, police, fire, or uh, medical, when we already have mutual, uh, exclusive mutual aid agreements with the county that they're going to be serviced anyway. But that's the pitch the town's making to get people to incorporate into town. There's no other viable reason to come to the town except for better services provided by your town. Okay. And how should the town work with obviously these, you know, historic communities to make sure that they get proper sewer and water? It's like putting the, the horse, the cart before the horse. Um, you know, in order to get adequate sewer and plumbing, you know, you have to dig up the land first to put the pipes in. You have to, um, you, you can't magically make a, sewer and water lines appear out of, out of thin air. So in order to do that, you're going to have to have mass construction projects around town in order to lay sewage and, and water pipes. Um, I don't know if the people of Somerville have the stomach to see everything tore up. Um, of course, it's strictly up to them what they, what they want to do. If they, if they want to tear your roads up, fine. Um, well, you know, we need to have the adequate public works and in our town. Where in the district do you identify and also develop those unique characteristics when it comes to residential, commercial, and mixed use? Where in the district? Are you yeah, do you identify and also develop those unique characteristics when it comes to commercial, residential, and mixed use? We have a very unique district in District 1 because we're surrounded by other districts. 
And frankly, there's there is nowhere to go unless the the town's like incorporating areas uh, like on Nexon Parkway in the, in the Dorchester County area. Uh, they're 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 zoning that for a a housing development mm. uh, right on right just past Maple going out to Nexon. However, that was given to District Five, mm. and we were bottled in around other districts. There's really nowhere to go to build multi multi unit homes. To have a lot of businesses move in unless they buy an existing business in District One. Um, I would love to have a an answer to that question, but okay. I don't think that myself or anyone on town council, including the mayor, could answer that kind of question without having residents give up their properties in Brownsville to build a multi-unit home, a uh, mixed, mixed commercial space. It's got to go somewhere. And unfortunately, in our district, we don't have a lot of vacant land. Got it. Besides Brownsville, Pastor, what communities in town, in the town of Somerville, that is, that actually need to be hands protected and, and obviously elevated? I think, I think they all should be protected. They all should be enhanced. Um, better, better lighting, uh, better streets, street lights. Um, you know, I got Scott's Mill, which is a neighborhood inside my neighborhood, uh, inside my district. Um, and, and they want the stop bars in the, on the side of the streets. Um, that's the, 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 the line that they paint on those lines because they don't stop at the stoplights, uh, stop signs. Uh, they just keep going right through, and it's a lot of kids playing that area. Uh, little things like that that the residents are begging for that we can do that won't cost a lot of money. Um, you know, there is a um, a program that that we have at Palmetto Pride that we roll out to the to any town and, and engineers that will listen to us. Um, it's uh, community um, uh, protection through environmental design. It's called CTEP. Um, what this program does is it teaches you how to landscape, how to light your streets, how to better adequately uh, focus on what you're doing inside the city limits to reduce crime in the streets. Um, that that's one way that we can enhance our neighborhoods um, by eliminating the areas that people can hide out in and, and jump you, if you will, just walking down the road. What strategies would you implement that would promote economic vitality and financial stability, not only for your district, but for the town of Somerville, while maintaining its residential character and preserving its natural beauty? We have a very beautiful town. And as you know, uh, you've, you've been here before. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely town. And that's the uh, thing that what we have to do as, as a town council is, is maintaining that historical relevance without, without losing its historical relevance. Um, and I think, I think that we, we can look for ways of increasing businesses without destroying the the vitality of our neighborhoods and our, our town uh, like we did right you know like a revitalization of town square we just did that's one way of, of doing that of Hutchison square um, and but there's places in our town that that you go to that um, that could use revitalization like Bacon's Bridge Road for example um, you know there's Places in there that can be revitalized. Um, there's some sections of Trolley Road that that are uh, places that we can redesign some things in there that uh, make it attractive for more businesses. Um, I know it's not a popular thing, but roundabouts, 
oh, yes. the alleviation of the traffic, um, like at Five Points in Somerville, right. having a roundabout right there that would eliminate a lot of that traffic. If they can a continual flow of traffic through that area is, is a proven thing with roundabouts that you know people have to get used to it like anything else. But you can put a very attractive roundabout inside the summer the city of Somerville and not take away from the historical value, uh, historical significance of our downtown. You know, th things like that. What has been the growth rate in the town over the past 10 years? The growth rate in the past 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, has been about 20%. Um, we, we, we keep putting apartment complexes in, in neighborhoods and incorporating areas that are unincorporated. Um, if I'm not, you know, I'm not mistaken, it's been about 20% growth over the last 10 years. And what has been that historical population trend for, obviously, your, your, the town of Somerville? Can you repeat that again? Yes, sir. What is that historical population trend in the town of Somerville? Historical trends. Yeah, the population trend for, over, for the past 10 years. Um, I don't know the trends off the top of my head. Okay. Um, but it seems like the, the growth that we're having is mainly apartment complexes, a few new subdivisions, and incorporating unincorporated areas um, is where we've been seeing all of our growth from. And what will be that population projection in the next five years? Well, the, the town of Somerville, the town proper, has, has I believe, about 95,000 people. Um, now, it's probably closer to a quarter of a million people when you go outward and the non-incorporated parts of the technical parts of Somerville, Niceville, Gedberg, yes. um, and around the town is probably a quarter of a million people. And we see those cars on the road every day. Um, and I would, next 10 years, I would project the town, the city limits of Somerville won't get much bigger unless they incorporate other areas, but the surrounding counties, like um, what Cottageville has a subdivision going out there, um, these are all these areas are starting to connect with one another. Um, Niceville, is, Niceville and Jedburg are basically all incorporated now because of the growth. Hmm. And that's all Dorchester County. Right. Um, that's not Somerville. Right. You, you get, you're outside the city limits. Um, you know, going out to Summer's Corners, yes. that place is really booming out there. Um, and all those cars are flowing into the town of Somerville. Uh, so I would say I could realistically project that inside of the next 10 years, we're liable to be at 350,000 people in the Somerville area at the rate we're going. Wow. And, and Pastor, how do you help those local businesses? boost their competitiveness among other businesses actually coming into the town of Somerville? Well, the, the biggest thing is by eliminating the, the, some of the taxes that we pay for businesses. Um, but businesses, other companies contact the, the local companies that are already here to see what our town is doing for them. Um, I don't think that the way to go is to give tax incentives to companies. I, I don't. I just don't think that's the way to to grow your business base. Um, people understand that they have taxes to pay. The problem that we have is when we the current businesses when they see a new business come into town and they're offered ten year deal of no taxes, and they've been here for struggling for thirty years. What about us? What do we get? Well, you don't get anything because we're not trying to attract you. You're already here. And I think that it should be fair across the board for every business. If we do one thing for a business you're, and not the other, basically we're in the business of picking and losing winners. You know, we decide that we need a new bank. So we're going to attract a new bank in here and give them a certain incentives to, to bring that bank into town. But yet the current banks we have aren't getting anything. So 
we should have a comprehensive business structure for all businesses, whether they're existing or not existing, to make it literally attractive to everyone to come to Somerville. How would you create a business preservation alliance? Hmm. Never thought about that. Um, I, I really, I never thought about that. A topics never came up. Uh, I, I don't know how to answer that question. Is a smaller scale commercial development more ideal for the town of Somerville in your mind? I think it is. That, 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 that small development lends itself very well to our town. Um, having, having the right, I would, I don't like using the word strip mall, but that's basically what it is. Um, but having the right face on it, face on the front of it, having it blend into the local community is much more attractive to the residents than having a five story hotel in the middle of downtown or, or having, having, uh, an Amazon pop up on Main Street, uh, a warehouse pop up in the middle of Main Street. Um, that's gonna that's gonna completely take away from the the nuance of Somerville. So I, I would think that small local retail shops are the way to go to build the business base in Somerville. And how should the town? You you've told me this just a tad bit earlier, but how should the town of Somerville explore multiple sources of revenue? To minimize any risk to the uh, town's current financial stability, well, it, it's it's really up to the town to de determine what we're going to do to with the businesses. Uh, and what I mean by that is, if a realtor comes in and wants to develop, having a a responsible uh, business plan for for infrastructure, having the businesses build. Putting in, putting in a, a development for a, a, a commercial space, having having the developer that builds that build the it, the access to the business into that plan. And you know, what what are, what are their you know we need to be asking the right questions of the developers. What is your plans for building this property, and does it work with the town of Somerville? Um, you know, we can't disallow every every five yards having a an interest way to a business because that then it creates a, a flow issue on Main Street, for example. Um, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to have a, 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 a different entrance on a side street that they would have to turn down that's already there and enter their parking lot? What is? How does that look like? And what are we? What kind of questions are we asking to builders that we're not asking now? What current public and private partnership would you develop to, you know, as far as infrastructure for the town of Somerville? Well, I think having a cooperative effort from not only the town of Somerville, but Dorchester County, the state, the federal government, uh, working with our congressman uh, Nancy Mace, uh, working with uh, you know the the various representatives, uh, Lynn Bennett, uh, Mandy Kimmins, uh, Sean Bennett. Sure. Uh, you know, working with those to make sure that we have the proper funds to do things with. Building a stronger alliance with Dorchester County, Berkeley County, and Charleston County governments because Somerville is a very unique town, and there's only. I think three in the state that has three counties in our town limits. Um, and we need to have a cooperative program effort with those three counties and all of our state representatives and our federal government to ensure that we're getting the proper funding to do these things with. And I was just thinking about this too, Pastor, but how should a town, town that is plan to slow outward expansion of the town limits and focus on making necessary changes within the town limits well that's that's part of a um a comprehensive plan that the okay. town has to have 
Okay. Uh, so they have none? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Because it's evident with, they may have one. I shouldn't say they don't. But it's evident the way they're incorporating, if you look, go to any town council meeting, listen to any town council meeting online, and half the meeting is the, is dedicated to incorporating an unincorporated part into town. That, that seems like it's half of their meeting. So that tells me that they're only focused on economic development through incorporation, which is the wrong model to go. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be approving apartment complexes and, and housing single family housing areas in Somerville until you've addressed the roads, the flooding, and everything else that's going on inside the town. You need to fix what we have now. You know they're they're talking about incorporating parts of Nexton into the town, but we have roads that aren't paved. We you know. You go down Germantown Road and it needs to be paved. You go down parts of Central and they need to be paved. Um, you know, anywhere you go in our town and there's infrastructure issues such as roads, you know, drainage ditches, the other major infrastructure issues. We need to fix what we have first and take care of what we have first in order to get more. You know, it's like a, a parent a child relationship. You, you can't you, can't, you tell your kids or you can have something as long as you take care of what you have now. I, I hate to, to reduce it down to that level, but that's basically what's going on. You know, the city, uh, the town of Somerville, has to take care of what they have before they get any new toys. Do you believe, Pastor, that if and when the town of Somerville moves towards slower growth rates, that revenue streams might get a little bit smaller? No, because it just won't change. The, the, the revenue growth is what we have right now is what we have. And if we don't expand, the revenue growth won't, won't improve. That's true. However, it won't decrease either. Unless you lose people and you lose businesses in a process. That's the only way that it can go down. So... Take what you have now and, and work work with it within that budget um, to make improvements and stop trying to grow the town so fast. What is the current budget for the town of Somerville? Um, it's it's about fifty four million dollars a year. And how many people have yeah. they actually lost as far as uh, residents? Well, it, it's hard to say. I, I don't have that number, but it seems like we're moving people in faster than we're losing them um, because of the, all the building we're doing. Um, the budget was $34 million last year, and it was just voted to $54 million this year. And I hope it's not because of all the, the COVID money we're getting from the government. I don't know that if that's the case, but the money that the, gov the city was getting for no. COVID, I hope they didn't increase, add that into the budget they're doing to have future budgets because we're not going to have that money much longer. And, and I, I want to ask you a question about that right now, actually, if I can pull up my question here. Yeah. But, let me, but let me ask you, uh, okay, uh, what, what, okay, for, say, for instance, with the American uh, Rescue Plan Act, how much of the re re recovery funds that is having used to fund lost revenue in the town of Somerville? I don't know. Okay. Nobody, I don't think any of the, you ask anybody in town, they can't tell you that answer either. Will the taxes in Somerville actually decrease after receiving those funds? No. What is the current tax base right now in the town of Somerville? Well, if, you, if you're from a homeowner's perspective, it's 4% for a, a primary resident, 6% if it's a rental. Um, the, 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 the tax base for a business is 9%. Um, it seems like every every... So often they, they tack on another percent for this bit, this spending plan or that spending plan, but it never goes away. What is it? Is it workforce housing? Is it affordable housing? Or is it attainable housing in your mind? I would repeat that. Is it workforce housing? Or is it attainable housing? Or is it affordable housing? For, That's the for issue. What, in what respect? 
as far as housing. Everyone talks about a, a affordable housing. Is it attainable housing? Is it workforce housing? Or is it, uh, like I said, attainable, uh, affordable housing? I think it's attainable housing. Okay. Uh, not being able to get the loans that you need uh, to to purchase a new home. Um, I talked to one lady in, our, in my district, and um, she's owned her home for, the family home has been there for 70 years. But the property value, she can't get a loan on her house to do the repairs needed for, I think that if there was a community bank that could lend to lower income people that could and make improvements, um, you know, that's the kind of things that we should be attracting into our town. Um, you know, th those kinds of companies that could bring value added to our, our residents. Um, so I, I think attainable housing is really the key. And right now it's a seller's market. Yeah. The houses that cost $150,000 several years ago are now 250000 this year. And it's pricing a lot of people out of the American dream of ownership for a home. Now that's going to swing back around, of course, the ebbs and flows of real estate. Um, but and it's going to come back down and be a buyer's market eventually. Uh, but right now it's a seller's market and people can't afford to buy homes. Now, let me fast forward. What exactly will you do on day one if you're elected to office? Well, day one, I'm going to take a sigh of relief that, that, that the race is over. Um, and you know, people talk about what they're going to do on day one. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is get into position, get on the seat, and, and really take a look at the things that the council is doing, the hiring practices, the, the, um, the, the infrastructure spending, and see where the, the most, where it's needed the most work. Um, I, I never understood these politicians who, so on day one, I'm going to do all this unrealistic expectations of stuff, uh, which, which they never do on day one. But I promise the people of Somerville that if I, you know, once I'm elected, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to work hard for them. And I will come up with a comprehensive plan based on what I find behind the scenes uh, because a lot of these things we don't know what's going on I can't sit here and give you a list of things that I, I'm going to do but I will go in there and find out what needs to be done and do it and I, I want to ask you this question right when you were talking about the housing uh, issue there but how many first time homeowners are there in District 1 Well, except for Scotts Mill, and, and that's an established neighborhood. Um, I don't know how many first-time home, homeowners are in there, um, unless they're buying an existing home. But that doesn't take away from the, their first home. Um, I've talked to probably canvassing the neighborhoods, knocking on doors. I've right. probably talked to... Um, 25, 30 people who this is their first home um, that have moved into the area from out of state or out of town. Um, but I don't think the number is very high. Most of our district is well-established um, family homes that have been in their family for generations and they've inherited their homes and maybe 5 to 10%. Pastor Don Johnson, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to the award-winning Quintus, folks. Uh, you're, I'm, I'm glad to be here, and it's been an experience uh, that's been a very enjoyable experience. And as always, it's, it's good to talk with you. Likewise. Thank you so much.